the product that I'm going to be top dressing with. So um, I've been working with Corridor Sands for a couple of years now um, with Queensland Lawnies, um, doing you know spring promotions and things like that. So they have two USGA sand products um, that I've used over the years. Um, the whole point of top dressing is to fill in low spots, level your yard, um, but also to mix up your soil profile. So that's the main reason I'm using it. Like obviously there's parts that I need to level, like there's a dip right here that goes the whole way. Um, so I need to level it, but the, the most important part of top dressing for me here is to try and change up this soil. So I've done a heap of core aerating. I've removed it all. I haven't mowed it back in. Um, I got rid of it. So now I've brought in this sand so now all of those holes that are in the lawn will now be filled with this sand. So I'm going to have a better mixture of sand and original soil in there. Um, fast forward about eight weeks, hopefully if this is recovered nicely, I'm going to core aerate and top dress again, just to make sure I've got more sand in this profile um, than I previously had. I'm going to spread the sand out. By the time I finish spreading this out, it should, because it's just going to be a nice thin layer, like about 10 mil or so, that'll dry really nicely. And then that is why I love to use sand. It's so easy to work with. Um, we'll drag something over it. There's actually a leveling bar that was delivered with the Bobcat. So I think what I'll do is tie that behind the ride-on mower because the Bobcat's just going to tear up the turf and obviously I don't want that. Um, so I think I'm actually going to tie that behind the ride on and just drag it around. So yeah, we'll see, but, um, make sure you get yourself. I, I prefer to use sand. Um, there are other top dress blends that are like soils and this, that, and the other. Most of them aren't washed. Um, most of them will have weed seeds in it. Um, they have organic matter in it, so they might have bark and things like that. I just, I prefer to stay away from those um, unless you've been down to the landscape yard, you've had a look at it and you're happy with the product. So definitely go like a double, double wash pit sand. And the reason you want it washed is you don't want the weed seeds um, and you want it to be a fairly uniform particle size. Um, so USGA spec, you don't necessarily need that at all. Um, the reason I go with it is one, I like to support the people who support me. So I'm supporting Corridor Sands, getting their product. Um, and two, um, it's actually not that much more expensive. It's actually pretty similar. So I'm pretty happy with this supplier. I do, I have seen USGA sand products and they're super, super expensive. So go the cheaper alternative. If it's double wash pit sand, that's fine. Um, but yeah, let's get started. We've only got the Bobcat for a few hours, so we're sort of on the clock and we decided, you know what? Let's just dump the sand out and get it spread because we actually hired the Bobcat um, for another video that is coming up. So for another project we've got going on. So we really need to free it up so we can use it for that. And by we, I mean my husband. So the bobcat just really scares me. So what I've got him doing is instead of, cause I don't want to rip up the grass, put it under any more stress. So all he's doing is going back and forth in straight lines. Um, just so it's gentle on the turf. And it's just dropping it in little piles, which I will spread out um, just with a steel rake for now. So I'm not leveling it, I'm just spreading it out and then I'll come and drag a leveler, probably with the right on mower behind it to actually get my levels right. <laughs> Back here now, I've just got, I just put a, uh, <laughs> I just put a chain on that drag thing. So you can use just a normal level lawn. You can get really wide ones that are great also. Um, to be honest, I was going to use a plastic pallet, 
Um, they're like 10 bucks or free on Gumtree. You can go and get them. Um, and I just used to put a rope around it, chuck some bags of fertilizer on it to weigh it down and then just drag that around by hand. Quickest, easiest way to level the lawn in my opinion. Um, but this year they dropped off a little leveling thing with the bobcat. Um, the bobcat would really chew it up if I tried to use that, but it's it's got a lot of weight to it. So we'll see how we go. I've tried to even this out as much as I can so that the ride on mower isn't um, under a heap of load. I don't want to make it work harder than it sort of needs to. But um, just when I was spreading it out, I noticed down the bottom there is it's pretty heavy. Um, with sand so I'm going to try and bring it up um, and yeah there's definitely like a bit of a trough going along there and there's a bit of a ridge here so the whole point of using one of those levelers or dragging this behind is it will skim the sand off those really high points in your lawn and it'll move it into those lower points so it'll make it quite nice and level so if you're looking um, to get a manicured look to your lawn you basically achieve that obviously by looking after it, but also with a cylinder mower. Um, and a cylinder mower will give you the stripe effect. And basically you can't really use a cylinder mower on a lawn if it's not level, it just, it just won't look very good. So I wanna get a cylinder mower onto this. So I'm gonna try and get it as level as I sort of can. I'm not gonna be too pedantic. I know some people go out with like screeds and stuff like that. Um, that's just not for me, but um, you do you. Um, as I said, in about two months, I'm going to come out and I'm going to do this process again. So I'm going to core aerate, get rid of it, bring in more top dress, level it again. Um, and then it should be looking pretty nice for Christmas. So, and now I need to figure out where I put the keys to the ride on mower. <laughs> One moment, please. Found him. <laughs> Oh man, it still stinks out here. That organic extra, mighty pungent. any of these products out yet just because we've had a fair bit of rainfall and these products require like a certain amount of rain or irrigation sorry I should say to actually water them in so rainfall is really unpredictable um, it's really inconsistent so I try to avoid where possible to spray before rain it's just been so drizzly the last like two weeks it's been great for the top dress because I haven't had to water anything but I really need to get these products out so these two products that I'm about to put down now, they form what I like to call the insurance policy. Um, so that is basically your last step after your spring renovation. So after you have followed all of the steps and you've done all of that work, you've paid all that money because none of this stuff is free. Um, the last thing you wanna do now is get army worm to come in and eat your lawn <laughs> and you lose it. So just, Keep in mind, just because maybe you haven't had lawn grub before doesn't mean that you won't get it. Um, so they go after anything that looks nice and lush and green and guess what, your lawn should be looking that way to them right about now. So this is the product of choice for me. This is called a Celeprin. Um, it comes in different variants as well. I, I've got the liquid because I can sort of justify that cost over 
um, a large property. But there's also, um, I think, four kilo granular. There's a 10 kilo granular. There's all different versions for homeowners. I'll put some links in the description. Um, but a celeprin is my choice because it is not just a bit of a knockdown effect, but it's a preventative. So it's got a residual effect where it will stay in the soil for about six months. So you need to apply this twice. So um, we're gonna apply it now and then we'll apply it again in six months time. And that means I will not get lawn grub, black beetle, anything like that in my lawn. Um, even more than that though, this product is pet safe, kid safe. It's nowhere near as toxic um, as your other options for lawn grub control. So if you have kids, you have pets, or you just, you know, value things being safe, then a celeprin is definitely the product for you. So as I said, a celeprin works in two ways. Um, so it can be taken up by the leaf, which is why usually they say, you know, put it out, don't water it in straight away, and then you'll get the lawn grubs that are there feeding on the leaf at night. Um, and then once you water it in, it's taken up by the soil also, okay? So it actually forms a bit of a barrier in the soil and they die. So that's what we want. So lawn grub is a really good product. The only thing I would say, if you have a proper infestation of lawn grub, so you're not looking to prevent them, you've already got them, they've already decimated your lawn, you know, you've done the um, bucket test and you have heaps coming up to the surface, that is when I would look at getting a contact like bifenthrin and putting that down with your acelaprin um, because it's going to have a greater kill rate um, than this product alone. Um, so just keep that in mind, use it in the right scenarios. Okay, I've got this product here, Haste 2 Pro TriSmart. So this is just my soil wetter I'm going to be using this season. I always pair my acelaprin or say if I were going to use Barricade or a liquid pre-emergent, I always pair them with my wetting agent. Um, and I do that because it breaks down that um, hydrophobic nature of the soil and it sort of allows those products to actually penetrate but also disperse quite evenly among the soil. So definitely try and put your soil wetted down with those products. Um, what I'm also going to apply today is Ronstar. So this is my pre-emergent weed control. The weed that it's not going to get for me, which I'm cranky about, well not cranky, it's not ideal, is I wanted it to get paspalum. I knew it doesn't though. Barricade gets paspalum, but Barricade has a root pruning effect. So this is sort of the next best thing um, because this doesn't have a root pruning effect and I have a lot of areas that I need to sprig. So that's why I've chosen Ronstadt. Still gets crow's foot, still gets um, pretty much all of your broadleaf weeds. So I'm gonna put this out just means that I'm gonna be battling the past palum a little bit longer than I had hoped, but that's okay. guys so I've just finished spraying um, the acelaprin out now so now I just need to water that in I'm pretty much run out of daylight so I'm gonna stop filming now um, but thank you so much for watching I really appreciate all the support I'm getting um, if you've got any questions comment down below and if you've got any suggestions for future content that you'd like me to cover I'm also open to ideas there but again thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please do so that is the best way to support the channel and I'll see you next time on Long Care Australia.